circuits. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's extreme. <laughs> that's extreme. Hey guys, Cal here. Just quickly, we just ticked over a hundred subscribers, which is unreal. Big Hugh, I think you beat my dad to being number one hundred, so you can always hold that against him. Thank you all for being here. I'm really enjoying sharing my journey and I hope that somebody watching sees that if you're passionate about something or interested in something, you should just go after it. This episode, we came across some hectic flying conditions. Enjoy, catch you at the debrief. Welcome to fly day number 10. First, I'll start off by saying we were meant to fly yesterday. I uh, woke up and there was horrendous weather. I know we were talking that we always get good weather, but um, woke up to the dreaded text message from the flight instructor, which said no flying today. So here we are on a Sunday flying, which is unusual. We've done 10 hours of flying now. Pre-solo exam is coming up. It's the prerequisite before you can fly solo now. Can I picture myself flying solo? Uh, I think last week was our first unassisted landing. Like I, I, there was definitely no input on the stick. So I knew that I had the stick all to myself and that the, the instructor wasn't, wasn't guiding me through the stick. So that was solo, but I'm not quite sure if if he was applying small inputs on the on the pedals. I'm getting a lot more comfortable in, in the circuit, which is good. It doesn't feel like it's uh, as as overwhelming now, which is great. I think a few more lessons under the belt and then I'll, I'll have the confidence to go up on my own, but um, instructors have been hinting it that it's coming and I think that it's, it's, it's one of those things from what I know and the people who I've spoken to, um, you'll do the pre-solo exam and then the solo will come a few lessons after that, but they won't announce that today's gonna to be a solo day. But we haven't done our pre-solo exam yet, so let's hope that we get to do that soon. All right, I'm getting hungry. Let me blend this thing. Damn, that's good. Anyway, so I think now it is the basically the road to, to our first solo, which is exciting. Let's go flying. Hopefully solo's coming soon. Stay tuned. Oh, that sun is just phenomenal. Also past that uh, that highway windsock, dead still, but the trees are moving a fair bit, so don't know how accurate uh, of a of a indicator that is. It's actually not that accurate at all. Beautiful sunny Sunday. Okay, here at the airfield. Actually, it's gonna be really interesting with the thermals. I've noticed when the sun comes out, it does get bumpy, as we've said, so. Oh, get our thermal boots on. Oh, there they are. Summer's coming. Let's get into lesson 10. One, two, three, two, thing. Range you five, how many? Loud and clear. Okay, perfect. One, two, seven, decimal five. Standby frequency, one, two, six, decimal seven. Checklist complete. Your pump on for takeoff. No traffic rollers, Jabiru 4971 is taxiing for runway 30. Traffic rollers. Traffic rollers, Jabiru 4971 is tra taxiing for runway 30. Traffic rollers. Do you like pulse the brakes here if you want to slow down? Uh, no, just, just hold it on. I wouldn't pump it too much. Okay. They don't need much power to taxi today, do you? No, not, not at all. Definitely feels drier than last week. That's soft there, by the way. Traffic rollers, Jabiru 49071 is lining up and rolling. 30 circuits, traffic rollers. Okay, your aircraft? My aircraft? Full power. Full power. Right rudder. Right rudder. Right rudder. Right rudder. Good fun. All right, flaps up. Okay, flaps coming up. You're just a little bit skiddy. Yeah. Just pulling it around the aileron a bit much. Okay. Clear left, clear right. And turning left, fuel pump off. Fuel pump off. Roll those traffic, Jabiru 4971, turning downwind 30. Traffic roll those. Good call. You're a little bit skiddy there. Yeah, just just using a lot of aileron, not quite enough rudder. Okay. Roll those traffic. Jabiru 4971, turning base 30, touch and go. Traffic rollers. Good. Bit of speed, keep it a bit close to the 80. Yep. Rolling out. Rolling out. Just use the water a bit on there, yep. See if you can hold it at 80. It's gonna be a bit faster the airspeed today, but that's all right, that's what we need. Okay, clear and final, and round we go. The 
if you go high, you can throttle back a little bit. Don't, don't get your airspeed too much higher than yeah, 80. Okay. Yep. Can we just come up with you for the first one? Yeah. Probably feel me moving the pedals a fair bit. I've just got a little bit of stick into the into the left. There's a little tiny crosswind, not much. I don't want to do an error of circuits. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get exhausting pretty quick. Oh, yeah. The ball's pushing to the left a little bit. Is that too much right runner? Yeah. Yeah, you're flying with the, with the left wing down. Yeah. I think we might just go and do a bit of upper air with you. I don't know whether you're going to get too much out of the landings today. Yeah. So we'll depart the end of downwind uh, for the northeastern training area. Rollo traffic, Jabro 4971, departing downwind 30 to the northeastern training area, climbing to 32000. Correct. Traffic Rollo. So when the wind's strong from the west, you've usually got to get above the highest peaks of the Adelaide Hills before you get out of this roll from the mechanical turbulence from the hills. Even though it's bumpy, we're going to try and endeavour to just to do some nice level turns. I want to come back to Bannum at 3,000 feet, see if we can hold that height accurate. In a 180 degree turn? Uh, 360, yep. Oh, 360. All right, come, come back, back to Bannum. Sure. Clear left. So for the conditions, that's pretty good. Straight and level. Rolling out. Yeah, a bit more rudder when you roll out. Now let's go to the right this time, so clear right. Make sure there's no one there. Clear right. Not making it easy for you, is it? I don't think I'm going to be able to find you any smooth air today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just a bit. One of those days. We tried. Let's go and have a look at the airfield, see what they've done. Yeah, all right. Uh, level turn to the right. Need a little bit more rudder when you turn. You tend to push the stick and not your foot. Yeah, OK. You're in, in agreement. It's just keep it a little bit shorter today and save your money for a, for a smoother day. We really need to sort of concentrate on the, the landings and takeoff. We need a bit, bit better weather for you. Are we going to do any more stall recoveries in training? Absolutely. We, we usually do um, get, get back into that you know, after your solo. Is it gusty today? Is that what conditions are? Yeah. Any time that we get strong winds from the from the west, because um, it rolls over the hills, you get um, turbulence. Plus we're getting some thermals from these clouds as well, which is bumping us around a bit. Having said that, it's not too bad here. The mobile long jail down here. I always thought that, that was for minor offenders and that, but apparently it's not. Uh oh. Some serious criminals in there? Yeah. I've seen a couple of times where they've almost been sort of roadblocks with the, with the cops around the place and that too when, they've, when someone's got, got out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they've had a couple of escapees. You're kidding me? No, no. Might have to get up here and, and, and run the search from up here. Yeah. What's this runway down here? Yeah, that's a cork. He's got his own aircraft. He's a bit of a character, actually. He was on his third aeroplane before he got a licence. Oh, you're kidding? No, no. In the 70s and earlier, there was a lot of people who thought themselves had to fly with lead light aircraft with the more sort of micro lighty type of stuff. And it was because there were so many fatalities that the, the training became sort of mandatory then. Rollo traffic, camera 4971, five miles to the southeast, 3,200, inbound, ETA, five minutes. Traffic rollers. Long Beach Airport. The runways are closed due to airport work. Did the all get uh, doubled up there? No, that's like a beat back. It's just an automated thing that when you when the signal goes out, it, it activates a, a tape recording, basically. Can you see your runways there? Too? I can, yeah. Beautiful. We're going to go to the right of it, the inactive side. Yeah, it feels a little smoother through this section. Because it's more constant the cloud, there's not the gaps. Oh, so, there's so, the, so the air becomes more one one temperature. You don't have the sun, and then the... yeah, okay, okay. Got a few things going on today with the with the extreme winds and and the broken cloud. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that touch and go was uh, was definitely wow. involved. Yeah. yeah. When I was living in, in California, there was a lot of you know, the terrain in California. There's so many mountains. Yeah. A lot of glider pilots, they're, they're up there, you know, chasing thermal, chasing the convection. They're up there for like eight hours. They want to have a big pee bottle. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Go to the toilet in their drink bottle. And you have to be at circuit height when you cross the runway. Yeah, 1,400. 
You can't descend on the live side, you can't descend on the traffic side. Yep. Yeah, I think of this a little bit like, because uh, we're in a fluid, you know, it's just a fluid, and it's like the, the beach, you know, the, the waves come in, as they reach the shore, they, they roll. That's what sort of happens here once you get down below the the height of the, the highest hills as it rolls. Ah, uh, okay. Roll those traffic, Chevro 4971, joining midfield crosswind 30. Traffic rollers. Okay, fuel pump on. Fuel pump on. And when you've got a tailwind like this, rolling out, the downwind leak's going to disappear so quick. Yeah, we're almost coming to the end now. Yeah. Up ahead, away. Getting a little bit too nose left, so just hold a little bit of stick towards you, a bit of right rudder. Right becomes a bit more instinctive after a while. You're not spending too much time looking at the airspeed indicator. You're looking at what's going on out here. Yep. Where it gets interesting. Raise the flaps for me. Flaps coming up. We can see why doing a lot of circuits with you is not teaching you anything really. <laughs> <laughs> it's teaching me the amount of uh, work it takes. Just got to realise you just keep going around until it feels a bit better. Yeah, I've been trying to relax a little bit more. It's not easy to relax when you're learning and you're new and you don't really know what you can get away with and what you can't. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> Oh, that's that's extreme. <laughs> that's ext is that extreme conditions? Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. You need to learn in in those conditions in case you. I mean, you shouldn't find yourself in them, but in case. Oh no, you will. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Another great flight. That was that was a little sorting. That was a learning experience. Until until about until about this far off the ground. Off the ground. Link it. Like this. It's a shame you're better. Close to touch down, you just got this gust, didn't you? Yeah, wow. it's like, that's it like it hit you. I was looking. Whew. Oh my goodness! That was the um, most wild flight lesson I've ever had. Uh, there was not many people flying at all. Some adverse weather conditions, very gusty. Windsock was pretty much completely inflated, so I need these blueberries right now. It really is quite good to practice in these um, high wind conditions because you know if you find yourself in these and you and you do need to land, you want you want to be trained for it. First touch and go, we came in, and um, the instructor's like, oh, "I'm just going to take uh, take control for this one." And I was like, "Go right ahead." <laughs> so. I'm pretty exhausted after that. One of the pilots who was there, uh, he had three of like the top of the line um, headsets. He had the Bose A20s. He had the light speed. Deltas, I think they're called. The David Clark 1Xs, and, and he let me try each of them on. I really like the David Clark ones. I haven't heard of those before. Very expensive, but that would make a world of difference, I think. We're a long way from that. We can only dream. Do we treat ourselves when we get a license? I don't know. One more step closer to that solo. It's coming. It's coming. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming soon. And I was right. My legs are sore from all that, that rudder work uh, on the pedals. Bit of ragu. Wow. Should we eat this bay leaf? Let's eat the bay leaf. Oh! All right, they were some hectic conditions. It's been lessons where it's been bumpy and because of thermals, but never have we been in gusty conditions. So a gust is when you have a sudden increase in wind speed, and this can seriously affect the way the aircraft flies. Sometimes you can have really high winds that are steady, and it's actually more predictable than having gusty winds that are changing all the time. I think it's really important to know how to handle gusty conditions if you do end up in them. Not only are you getting like bumped around the cockpit the whole time, but uh, your airspeed indicator is like flicking from like low airspeed to high airspeed really quickly and that's because uh, you're just getting these, these gusty winds go over the pitot tube. So you don't know what to believe. Something we did was come in a little bit faster than we usually do on a normal approach. And the reason we do this is to give ourselves like a bit of a buffer, like some margin against the, the airspeed fluctuations so that uh, we don't get too slow when that gust just suddenly stops. And my key takeaway from this was just to always be ready to go around. When you're coming in for a landing and things don't start to look good and they can change so quickly at the last minute, then the best option is just to go around and try it again next time. That's my bedtime.
I think this is like video four in like two weeks, so I'm holding myself accountable. How good is this? Consistency. It's good. Feels good. Thank you for watching. See you in the air next week. Godspeed.